Accept the recording. Hit that start stream. Wait for the go live button. And let's do this. And we're live here on Facebook. I'd like to welcome those listening in. I don't have enough permissions. What? Huh. It looks like it's working, actually. So I don't know what's going on. It's being weird. Uh, as long as it's recording on your end, we should be okay, Mike. Yeah, it says we're live and we're recording. So uh, we're live here on Facebook. I'd like to welcome those listening in podcast land. And also... I'd like to welcome my buddy Rich. Rich, how you doing today? Doing good, Mike. So, uh, yeah, it's nice to be back on a Saturday afternoon. Been a while. It has been a while. So too many late night shows. Yeah. Too many. Yeah. And it was going to end up being a late night show, uh, barring what happened last night. A little baby issue. Baby had some issues. He's fine. He's doing fine now. So no big deal. Um, but, man... It would I would have had to do last night because it's community breakfast uh, here in Esterville. So I don't know what's going on. It keeps telling me I don't have enough permissions, but it's not. Okay, it's fine. Whatever. Anyway. All right. Um, so a lot to discuss here with, with this week, Mike. Yeah. With, uh, with uh, an unexpected hire by the Cubs, yeah, yeah, came out of left field. Um, yeah, I uh, mean, yeah. Uh, um, uh, as well as having to wrap up the NASCAR season, as we had our final race last week down in Phoenix, and. As usual, doing our normal uh, NFL coverage, Mike. And Mike, you also have an opinion to share about this NBA Cup Yeah, uh, that's going on. Yeah, big deal. Uh, lots of stuff to talk about with it. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, on top of it, we got uh, NASCAR to finish up, and we have the NFL. Along with that, um, Rich, what's it time to do? Mike, let's go ahead and roll that intro. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast with your hosts, Mike and Rich. Rich, we're back. By the way, I wanted to correct you on that. It uh, It's actually... The the hire wasn't didn't come out of left field. It came out of the infield. Oh, okay. See what I did there? Yeah. I do see what you did there. Uh, okay, but before we get to all of that, we have our poll question. We're talking cereals. We're talking breakfasts. This week was breakfast foods. That uh, yeah. So we might not be live on Facebook. I don't know what's going. Um, no, we are okay. Um, yes. So last week we was donuts versus sausage. By the way, uh, last week one of the days last week was National Donut Day. Totally by accident. I did not schedule that. Totally by accident. Yeah. So, Mike, did did you go with sausage? Whether you prefer them in links or as patties, or did you go with donuts? Uh, I went with donuts. Yeah, I went with donuts as well. When it comes down to, if I was given a plate of both, assuming that it's a donut that I like, I'm probably going to go with the donuts. Yeah. But most of the time with the sausage, I need something to go with the sausage. I don't, I don't know if I like just to eat it as standalone. Here's a question, and this has actually changed in my life. Are you a okay. are you a uh, a maple on uh, um, a maple syrup on your sausage guy? No. Oh, no. good. I don't like it anymore. When I was a kid, it's weird. So, uh, maple is one of those things that, as a little kid, I liked it. And as I grew older, I started hating it more and more. Uh, I have reasons. Uh, weird and complicated reasons we don't need to get into here. But uh, with that, 
Uh, I don't do that. Uh, we had three votes, by the way, for sausage. Uh, Solomon Stroop, AJ, your wife, uh, Amy Hendricks, and Mikey O'Rotorer. Uh, four donuts, Rich. You voted for it. I voted for it. Jordan Stroop voted for it. Your mother, Pam Hendricks. Greg Sackerson. Your brother, Josh Hendricks. Your other brother, Josh Couture. And finally, Riley Feld. All voted for... Uh, all voted for Donuts. Donuts wins 72% of the vote, making it 8 to 3. Did we have any comments on if people preferred links versus patties or what their favorite type of donuts? I do not see any comments on it. Okay. So, Mike, you said no to the maple flavored sausage. Oh, hey. versus links or patties. So, I really like sandwiches, like the, the biscuit. Like, if you're going to put a breakfast biscuit together, it's mm-hmm. got to be eggs, sausage, and cheese and on a biscuit. I love that. So that would be a patty. But when I eat it standalone, I like the links. Gotcha. I think that I, I just go patty um, all around, I think. And uh, a favorite donut of yours, Mike? Um, so I like chocolate long johns. Like that's basically okay. the only thing I really like. Like I do like other chocolate, did the weird chocolate, other chocolate ones out there, but uh, um, um, I, I kind of like a cinnamon sugar with the uh, with the, like the um, uh, with some raspberry filling, raspberry or strawberry filling inside. I hate the jelly donut. Oh man, I hate the jelly donut. But that actually leads into a conversation we're gonna have. Later, when we talk Ooh. Mass Singer. Gotcha. All right, Mike. So this week we're going back to the cereal side of the bracket, and we're gonna go with Corn Flakes and Cheerios. Ooh. These are the original heart healthy just Cheerios. Okay. Not the Honey Nut Cheerios, which will come up later on in the poll. I'll try and get that posted after we get off of air. Mike, yeah. do you see what's coming up next? Rich, is it the le- uh, the last left turn of the year? It is, Mike. And what's going to be after that? Well, I mean, it'd be the off season. Yeah, it would be the off season because we're going to go into the NASCAR corner for the final time, presented by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois, down on Fifth Avenue, or you can find him on the eBay Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. Mike, give us the results. You just want me to say it. Rich, last week in Phoenix, your race winner and your non-playoff driver pick Ross Chastain. You also picked Ryan Blaney, who came second. Kyle Larson came third, my pick. And Chase Elliott came 16th. By the way, not bad picks overall. Uh, Good job. Uh, we we officially I, I proposed the change we didn't make it this year but we are officially changing our playoff points that next year if you get a first and a second and it's, I'm saying it on air so it's, mm-hmm. it's now yeah. happening if next you get a first second in the playoffs and both of your picks you get four points for a perfect week yeah, but this week, with that not being the case, Mike, even though I put one two at a perfect week, putting one two, I still fell one point short in the playoffs. So, Mike, you win the playoffs, twelve to eleven. The overall record goes to me over the full season, as I end up winning twenty nine to twenty six. By the uh, way, Ryan Rich, Blaney's championship makes it back to back for Team Penske as yeah. Joey Logano won it last year i do like i mean honestly you we joked about how how well you did in the regular season you were only three races ahead of me four you were four races four races ahead because you finished three i was one ahead of you in the playoffs so in the regular season you were only four ahead of me that's actually pretty decent Mm -hmm. so um Good year. It's been great. Uh, been was a great year this year, and uh, we look forward to 
Uh, some time off. We got other stuff to talk about. Um, tons to talk about this week. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. So, so, so what did you think of the race or, or did you get a chance to, to see it? I watched part, I watched a lot of it. It was fine. Um, I mean, I, I did NASCAR nap through parts of it too, mm-hmm. as you, as you do. Um, it was, I mean, it was fine. I, it, what I saw, uh, it was great seeing, I mean, all of the playoff drivers, except for Christopher Bell going out under, under mechanical issues. Um, but other than that, all of the the playoff drivers finished in the top five, if I remember correctly. Yeah, because I believe... Other uh, than Christopher Bell. Byron was either fourth or fifth. Yeah. Yeah. So, great to see. Um, I would have loved to have seen uh, Larson or or uh, Byron win it all, but, you know, no big deal. I'm not a big fan of either of those two, actually. Um, and, you know, the the craziest one is when you watch, uh, look at, at how good um, um, Denny Hamlin did in the yeah, race. He, he had a good race, too. So, Mike, what did you think that it was wrong for Ross Chastain to be racing hard in that frustrating Blaney because he wasn't either allowing him to pass for the lead or that he was making it hard for him to go from second to first. Okay, here's the deal. Ross Chastain's job is to win. Or anybody's driver. That was right. non-playoff driver. Anybody's out there, whether they're racing for the championship or just racing, is yeah. to win. You're also not teammates. So that as another reason why you would say who cares so if they were teammates would he have had a, more of a reason to be upset if like Lugano or uh, Cindric were leading that race and they were racing him hard and not and not allowing him to pass so he could win win the race and the championship honestly I would say no I think that okay. he I think that their job is to, to let is to race their job's not to guarantee their their winner a first place. Now, if they were teammates and yes, if they were teammates. If they were teammates, here here's the here's the cha- the difference in that. If they were they were che- teammates and uh che- and Kyle Larson wasn't I think 1.5 seconds back after behind uh Blaney, if he was right on Blaney's tail, if he was door to door with him, then a teammate's job is to block for your teammate to win the championship. Ooh. Your job is to make sure your guy wins the championship. But otherwise, no. With as much of a lead as they had, there was no reason for them to to for anybody to fight anybody on that. Like for for them not to to race hard. Ross Chastain did what he's supposed to do. Anybody who thinks otherwise is wrong. Yeah, I mean, I right, I I think I only got to see the third stage because that's when we got back from the Amanda Colonies. Um, but I mean, it was just it was really interesting to hear the chatter going on back with uh, Byron's crew chief Rudy Fugel saying that hey, just just keep on keep on keep on doing what you're doing. Blaney's Blaney's melting down and firing up and and uh, fading away because he was getting so frustrated yeah. and racing by racing Chastain for the lead and getting so upset that even on camera, he fl- he flicked him off and he flicked him off when uh, at, at one point during the race here's, and the camera caught it and the camera, the in camera. Here's my um, question. In car camera caught it. Here's my question. If Ross Chastain, let's let's take it out of the last race of the year, racing for a mm-hmm. championship. If it's, let's say it's next year in Iowa. Okay. That's the middle of the season. Honestly, doesn't have a lot of implicate. Like, yeah, win gets you into the playoffs. No, that's nice. 
<clears throat> but outside of that, there's no real implications into that in that race, right? It, it, there's nothing special about it. It's a middle of the no. year race. If Ralph Chastain chase fights Ryan Blaney that hard during that race, is it a big deal? No. Not okay, then deal. why I, is it? I a... still don't think it's as big of a deal. I, I mean, all that we I, the commentators were saying it. I'm sure it came across on the radio communications. It's like, why are you fighting so hard for, for the lead? Just give it up. Make sure that the five and the twenty four don't pass you. That's and, when you can get mad and frustrated. And <laughs> even then, even then, race. If you can't pass a guy, that's that guy's better than you. And Ross uh, Chastain was week. better than than him that week. That week, yep. I I don't. Yeah. Anyway, Rich, anything else? Uh, how did you feel about the season? Um, I thought it was a good season. Looking forward to next year, uh, especially with the race coming into Iowa. Yep. And coming into Iowa next year, the end of the there weren't too many changes to the schedule besides Iowa being added to. Um, I, I'd like I'd like to see him get away from that clash at the Coliseum stuff, so that the so you don't have you're not going cross country multiple weeks. But I don't I think with the money yeah. grabs, I don't think that's going to go away. The money grab that they can get for an exhibition race, uh, TV network wise, I don't think that's ever going to go away. Or it'll or it'll get moved to a similar. A similar location where they can hype that up. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't mind the clash at the Coliseum. I think there's better things to do, better places to go. But you know, whatever. Um, so, Rich, overall in the season, you won the fantasy NASCAR with sixty six thousand sixty six hundred and eight points. Solomon Stroop came in. At second with sixty three thirty four, I came in four or third with fifty nine sixty one. Funk House and the rest of these didn't do anything in the playoffs. Funk House had thirty forty five. Jordan the Stupus Supus came in fifth with twenty nine twenty five. Jenna Bean, who stopped early in the season, ended at eighteen twenty five, and Jeffrey the Stroop, who actually. Played more rounds than Jenna Beans. Ended at fourteen thirty-eight. Rich, good job. Uh, overall in the playoffs, I don't know if you can do just the playoffs, can you? Um, I yes, you can. That up. So the playoffs, um, I won the playoffs with nineteen fifteen. Uh, Solomon came in second with eighteen fifty-six, and Mikey came in third with seventeen oh two. And That's everybody else tied. At yeah, zero. they tied for fourth with zero. Yeah. So Mike, why don't you go ahead and take us out of the NASCAR corner and we'll go over to the gridiron. And this has been the NASCAR corner presented by Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated, Moline, Illinois. Check them out for all your sports memorabilia needs online on their eBay store or in person on Fifth Avenue, Moline. Once again, that is Triple I Sports Cards Incorporated. Rich, let's head to the gridiron as you say. Let's talk football. Rich locks of the week this week. I picked the Chargers over the Jets. And sure enough, Chargers win 27-6. Rich, you picked the Colts over the Panthers. Colts pulled it off as well. 27-13. I'm at 5-4 and four on my locks. You are at 4-5 and five on your locks. Rich, how'd the upset specials go? Well, might be upset specials. You had the Commanders over the Patriots. The Commanders came out on top, twenty to seventeen, and proving your mark to five and four. My pick of the Dolphins over the Chiefs did not go through, as it was twenty-one to fourteen. Chiefs dropping my lock of the week, my uh, upset alerts to six and three. Rich, the Bears played in New Orleans last Sunday. We both picked the Saints, rightfully so, because the Saints won 24-17, despite having set, uh, five turnovers, a negative five turnover rate in that game. The Bears were only down seven points. 
The Bears, or that brings my record to six and three. And Rich, you are at five and four. Rich, how did we do when it came to Thursday night football, which was the yeah. Bears and the Panthers? Well, like the we both picked the Bears, and the Bears won sixteen to thirteen. Uh, Mike, you are seven and three for both Thursday night and the Bears. Um, I am up at six and four for the Bears and nine and one on Thursday night football. Okay, so real quick, let's talk about this game. Is it just me or did it look like neither team wanted to win? It was a tough one. I mean, I don't, with the way that the offense was going at the end of the game for the Panthers, I can't blame them for saying, all right, let's kick a 59 yard field goal and let's see if we can yeah. tie it. Yeah. Because. Where did you trust that your offense was going to be able to get that first down anyway? No, at least go for the tie. Yeah, I I, I didn't, and I didn't get to watch any of the Saints game. Okay, so. um, yeah, the Bears. The problem that I have with the Bears one, let's talk about our our backup quarterback that is currently starting. This young man has some great abilities. But what I've realized, and it's been confirmed when I listen to some of the pundits that you listen to, he has great football IQ. He he is one of the top knowledge-based guys in the NFL. But man, this guy's physical abilities is not NFL caliber football. Is he is a are his qualities good enough to be a backup quarterback? I would say there's a reason why he was a D2 quarterback. I don't know that his his skills are good enough to qualify to be a uh, an NFL quality quarterback. I just don't and that's sad, but I, from what I've seen, he lacks a lot of the physical attributes needed. Intelligence-wise, he's he. You can see, you can see how smooth he is in the pocket. You can see him smoothly take his his reads, come back to the to the to the dump off. You can see every. You can see his brain working in the best possible ways you ever you you ever can. Have the Bears had that in a quarterback? No. But he's regularly behind the receivers. He's regularly putting it in spots that are not the right. Not that they're not the right spot to be. They're just not the right time. He puts it there just a little bit late. And I think the problem is is that his his arm strength, his physical ability there is not good enough to keep him in there. And that's the problem. Um, that's why I hope that after this long 10 days off, uh, the Bears will get I, – I, I'm hoping Justin Fields is back. Yeah, but I, I think they, they need to have Justin Fields back yeah. because now – that was when the season because gets real. They, exactly. They need to you that because by the end of the regular season, they need to make the decision. Is Justin Fields going to be our quarterback moving forward? Or are we going to hit the reset button yeah. and draft somebody with one of the two top five picks that we're going to have? Yeah. It's man, it's gonna be crazy. So they they need him back. Yeah. They need him back. Okay, Rich, anything else? Oh, from the last week of football I do have a question uh, kind of going to give some comments about it too um, about the week in football kind of um, I don't so Nick so this week uh, due to some uh, busyness between both for both of us we are going to skip our power rankings this week and we um, next week we are going to look at, at the standings since it's okay. kind of like the mid, a good midway point. Yep. Uh, in the NFL season, so that'll be next week. Uh, so Mike, make sure to have those ready. Yeah. Uh, for next week. Yeah. So Mike, what is your question before we give our picks for week number ten? 
Demabatard. Okay. Have you heard his statements? I have not. So he has a conspiracy theory that the injury to Aaron Rodgers is all a hoax. His theory is, ever since he came out of his darkness seclusion thing, Aaron Mm -hmm. Rodgers is attempting to prove science wrong. This is with a combination of a lot of things, but not the least of which is, you know, ayahuasca and getting on a different plane and all that that stuff and meditate. He's trying to prove science wrong. Dan Levitard speculated what... Dan Levitard speculated, I'm just going to call it that, that uh, mm-hmm. that, but doing so, uh, one of the things he did is a fake ankle in, uh, Achilles injury that then now he's going to prove that the science is wrong and that his way is better than science and he's going to be back playing before science says he should have. Mm-hmm. So whether it was a fake injury or a real injury, the, his speculation goes is that rehabbing his way is going to prove science wrong. Right. That's kind of the that's the okay. Dan Lebatard argument. It's the Dan Lebatard argument. Okay. I think <sighs> I remembered seeing seeing that statement being made. I'm not quite sure about it though. Lots to unpack there. Now, part of it has to do with, you know, the his arguments against getting the vaccine and all this other nonsense. <sighs> One, the Jets wouldn't play along. The Jets think that they are a Super Bowl contender as of right now. Like, they thought at the beginning of the season that that was the thing. Their team would not have gone along with playing this way or with letting this play out this way if that's all this was. That's number one. Pure pure fact. The team wouldn't let it happen. Two, and this is the better, the the other side of it for me, Dan Lebatard is known for making jokes I love listening like I loved listening to him when I did he makes great he was the only thing on ESPN radio that I actually listened to other than don't have so us were local back when they were on but other than that mm-hmm. I didn't I wouldn't listen to anything else on ESPN radio in the quad cities that was it so I'm sorry, but that's not going to work. One of the things about Dan Levitard, though, is he likes to make jokes and he likes to kind of come up with crazy, stupid things. And I think that's all this is. I think it's Dan Levitard making a joke. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I'd have to agree. I mean, yeah, I the, I don't think the Achilles injury was, was fake. I mean, could yeah. the... But, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if he comes back or wants to come back to prove, to maybe prove a point that his way of rehabbing could be better than what the normal treatment plan is. By the way. But not, but not as a way of saying that he didn't fake the injury and be to be out all these weeks. By the way, I got a question. Sure. When LeBron James started doing his cryotherapy stuff and his special modes of rehab, was he proving science wrong? No, he was using modern technology. Why is it that the way that that Aaron Rodgers is doing whatever it is, his rehab, why is that proving science wrong? And why isn't it using modern technology and using modern sciences? Just because the old school way... Well, the old school way didn't say you sat in a cryo chamber to recover after a basketball game. You smoked a cigar and you sat in a hot tub with a bunch of beautiful women and did stupid stuff. Ask Dennis Rodman. 
This is dumb. Dan, you're better than this. That's all I got to say about it. Okay, very well. So, Mike, looking into week number 10, um, uh, it, it's an even week, so I have the pick. I have the right first right yep. games. My lock of the week, I'm going to go with the Cowboys over the Giants. It's a good game. Um, it's a divisional game, but that was with- the Giants – the Giants are going to be playing their third-string quarterback now, a guy named Tommy DeVito. Yep. And the team just hasn't looked good regardless yeah. all year. Yeah. And the Cowboys seem to beat up on bad opponents anyway. So I'm going to go with the Cowboys. Yeah, I'm going to pick another team that beats up on bad opponents, and I'm going to pick the Bills over the Broncos. Game is in Buffalo, so no altitude issues. And uh, besides that, I don't know that the Broncos can get out of their own way. Okay. Not a bad pick. Or the Broncos are still trying to figure out who they are or who yeah, they want true. to be that's still. True. Okay. Um, Upset alert, Rich. Who you got? I'm going to go with the Cardinals over the Falcons. Kyler Murray is coming back. Okay. Okay. Kyler Murray is coming back. And and you know what? The Bears need the Falcons. The, they, the Bears could use the Cardinals winning some games down the stretch with yeah. their – and I don't think that they're going they they want to see Kyler Murray do well because they are evaluating him just like the Bears will be evaluating Justin Fields once he gets back on the field. And I you think know? that it's more than just that. I think they're also advertising Kyler Murray. Yeah. I think I think it's a combination of evaluation advertisement. If yep. if he's good enough, maybe you can get a draft pick out of it. And you can get out from underneath that contract. Or he plays well and, okay, you are our guy. Let's get a coach in here that you work with. I don't know. Or they keep the coaching staff. They keep Bruce to the coaching staff. That yeah. He's still the guy that Cliff Kingsbury and Steve Kime saw when they drafted him. 100%. Yeah. And signed him to that long-term contract. Yeah. Mike, I, who are you going to go with? I like that. Uh, I'm going to pick the Jaguars over the Niners. I think this one's a bigger stretch than yours, but I don't think it really is. The Jaguars are playing a, a, as a better team this week, uh, this year, and uh, we've seen the Niners have some issues the last couple weeks. So that That's true. They have had some injuries, and they're – Probably the biggest player that's injured that's still not back for this game is left tackle Trent Williams. Yeah. So yep. maybe the pass rush of the Jaguars could uh, still keep giving Brock Purdy fits, and yep. the Jaguars are able to pull an upset. I, I don't mind the pick. Yep. I like it. Um, okay, Rich. The Bears are are they're not off this week. They just get ten days break because they played a Thursday night game. So we don't have to pick a game this week. Uh, we will pick a game next weekend, next Saturday. It's got to be Saturday mm-hmm. next week. Um, yes. And because we're going to pick that game next week, uh, we have no Bears game to pick this week. But we do have a Thursday night game. Actually, the best Thursday night game we've seen in a long time. Knock on wood, nobody gets injured in the mm-hmm. next 48 hours as we uh, as we watch them get playing. Um, but we will see the Ravens take on the Bengals. Um, man, this is going to be a good game. It really is funny because Lamar Jackson and the Ravens are clicking with that new offense. And Joe Burrow and the Bengals have come off of their start of season hangover and yeah. have started going back to the team that we all thought they would be. Yeah, they really have. So uh, excited there. Okay, Rich, um, anything else in the NFL you want to talk about? Uh, we never gave who's going to win the game. Just oh, yeah. We talked about the game. It's so, going to be the Bengals. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Bengals as well, but I wouldn't be surprised with it being a division game if Lamar Jackson and the Ravens uh, pull it off. Okay, Rich, anything else before we go into our quick hits, which are actually going to be the majority of our conversation today? Yeah. Nope, I, I got nothing else in the NFL, so uh, next week we'll give you our power rankings, and uh, we'll also look at how our division playoff picks are doing in the NFL. So, yep. Mike, we have our first playoff playoff kind of quick hit that we didn't get to last week, which was the NBA Cup. A first time, a first, the first time it's happening, and it's a way to. It was set up as a way to get more get more action and interest into the regular season, especially the early season. 
the early part of the season, Mike. What are your thoughts on this NBA Cup? This is the dumbest. I, no. This is a great idea. Okay. The NBA Cup is a great idea. Let's do a mid-season thing. Make the regular season seem normal. Now, the dumbest thing in the world? Rich, hang on. I got to I got to do some checking real quick. So so they they had they started this NBA Cup probably less than a week before the season started. After the season. week after the season started. Really early, so you have a lot of teams. I, I don't know if I like the placement of it either because you've got a lot of October twenty fourth. The season okay. started. Uh, and the NBA Cup would have started, I think, it was last week. Yeah, it was the last week. Less than a month, less than two weeks after the season starts. The season goes from from October 24th to November 14th. This isn't a mid-season anything. This is a early season issue. This is an early season thing. Why? Why would you have this thing two weeks after the season starts? You're not getting the best basketball you get. You also, it's so early on, like, you're fighting playoff baseball. You're fighting the NFL. You're fighting college basketball or college football. Now you're going to get ready to fight college basketball. What makes sense here? I, I don't like it either, Mike, because how many teams are breaking in new coaching staffs or new yeah. players? And you're giving them less than a week to play together, and they're, oh, we're going to start this tournament. I got a fix for it, though. What's the fix, Mike? Christmas. I, you know, I was thinking the same thing. So you have game, you have the tip-off of this NBA Cup on Christmas. Yep. Christmas night, so you, Christmas Day, you make it one week. It's just one week. You're going to – because, by the way, how do you seed this tournament, Rich? A week and a half into the season, how do you seed this tournament? Um, that, that, that's what the uh, the group play is for, Mike. Oh, so now we gotta have to have – you have to play four teams in your group, and you got to play all four of them. So now you got to play 12 games before you can yeah. s- seed the tournament tournament? Yeah. Why? That would make sense. That would make sense. Start that around Christmas time. Don't even have. And by the way, here's my thing. Start Christmas Day. Don't do group play. There is no group play. You've played up to Christmas Day. Christmas Day we have tip off. Christmas Day we start the the seatings have been set. Christmas Day, you know what we're gonna get? We're gonna get all our number one games out. We're gonna get our Eastern number one team playing our Eastern number sixteen team. So, so Mike, are you number fifteen using the regular season? What happens between October, the start of the regular season, to Christmas? As your seeding, you basically put all thirty-two teams into a thirty-two team bracket, and you do a yep. March Madness style one yep. game, hundred percent, and you're out. And it and it lasts one week. Start knockout. It lasts. Christmas, it starts on Christmas Day and it ends on New Year's Day. None of the big, like, if you, if you do, if you have your, your final championship match, Christmas, or, uh, uh, on the last day of the year, or on, on January, do it, there you go, do it, do, do, start Christmas Eve, have your number ones play Christmas Eve. Play all the way through. Have your final matches New Year's Eve. Yeah, I mean, yes, you're, you, you've you eliminated the competition of the baseball playoffs or the World Series, which, yep. by the way, did have the lowest ratings in history this year. Yeah, but I but don't think it has anything to do with this tournament. Pro- probably not. It doesn't. You, you'd still have the end of the regular season 
in football, so maybe you don't schedule any games on Sundays. Maybe. And you got sure. college football bowl games, but depending on the sobriety of the bowl game. Most of the bowl games, yeah. You, you might lose some viewers to that, especially with ESPN having the, the, the broadcasting rights to those bowl games. Yeah, and you might. But you know what? It It's basically the middle of the season. You have a week of awesome NBA matches. Crowning a, a midseason champion. By the way, give that midseason champion automatic playoff berth. All right. I like that too. But here, here's another idea for you, Mike. Yo. Why not still do the whole group play and the season to where you have the – you? space it out between off days and everything to where the championship game of this NBA cup that they're calling it until they probably get some sponsor to pony up and sponsor it. Yep. How about that take place at the all-star game that nobody watches? I'm fine. Um, I'm okay with that. The problem I have though is that uh, the skills competition still needs to happen. Hmm. You can still have the skills competition. You can still have a dunk contest, which doesn't get superstars that you even hurt that you even know of. By the way, but the three but the three point contest still. You want to you want to have a more major stars. You want to have a bigger, more fun thing. I just made it. I just found a way to make it even more okay. fun. Put it in the bubble. Do a bubble where everybody's in make the same it, place. Make it in in Orlando. That way, there's no travel. You play every other day, every third day, maybe. You can't complain that. Well, the, the, then teams are losing regular. But if you're doing it as a week or a two week thing, yes, a bubble could work. But yeah, the way that they're currently doing it, it's taking their. It's cup play, but they're still regular season games, so they're. Yeah, it's yeah, dumb. It, it, it's complicated, but but it is. It was kind of funny to see players and even coaches talking about it of well you know the, the atmosphere just feels different here but i'm not i'm not sure i'm not how to describe it and i'm not sure how this whole they're still not sure how this whole nba cup thing the is. way that it's working is dumb they need to they need to have a better solution for this because guess what now they're going to have to change the schedule of these players of these games as soon as the group plays over they have to change the entire schedule for the next however many weeks they do to make this cup finish. Yeah. Cause so I don't, I don't think it's going to go away, Mike, but I do think it's probably going to be tweaked. I think it needs and, to be tweaked a lot. For, for a lot. So make it, like, make it, it like legitimately tell me why you don't make it Christmas. I, I don't know. I, I like the idea of starting it on Christmas. It gives time between October and November for teams to get, even if you started at December first, yeah, at least you give. Teams yeah, I'd be okay with that. That have new, that have new coaching staffs and new players. Yeah, let's time do it. To gel as a team and come together. Everybody's wondering right now why are the, uh, why are the Clippers zero three since they acquired James Harden? Because they have to give up a good chunk of their team to get James Harden in yeah. the building. Yeah, it makes no like. Uh... So I don't know. Any other, so so no. is this. NBA Cup has it made it worth watching any early NBA season basketball? Nope. No, me neither. So, Mike, uh, before we get into the big news of the Cubs' new manager, Ohio, we got some quick hit style okay. uh, for awards winners. That the Cubs that won awards, uh, Gold Gloves, uh, were given to Ian Happ, Dansby Swanson, and Nico Horner. Yeah, your and silver slugger, slugger, Cody Bellinger. Cody Bellinger. Yeah, as a utility man, I don't know how you how even though he can play center and first, how that I, I think of a utility player as being able to play Short, more than two positions, first. not not one posi- not one extra position, but I'll yeah, take it. Yeah, I normally think of a of a uh, utility guy as a shortstop that also plays second, plays in all three outfield positions, and yeah. can play third base. Generally, not a first baseman. Yeah, but a, but he, that's who they gave the award to. Whatever. And um, well, the I, big manager of hire that we'll probably spend the rest of the show talking about uh, was Craig Council coming down from Milwaukee, going to Chicago. 
uh, but also from show to show, the Mets hired Carlos Mendoza, the, in, the Guardians hired Stephen Voigt, and Ron Washington is going to be the new skipper for the Angels. Job's still open, Houston, San Diego, and now Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Uh, we also, you left off uh, Bob Melvin in San Francisco. No, that was, we talked about that last week. Oh, yeah, we so, did. So we'll talk about all the, um, all the, all the, um, all the hires once all the, once the three mating jobs are, are, uh, are filled. Yeah. But, but Man. Great Council coming down, that was a big move that came out of nowhere. So not, if, <clears throat> nowhere is a little it came out of, of all, we knew that we everybody knew that Craig Council was available was technically available. He was a free agent manager. His contract was up. The thought was Milwaukee was trying to retain him, or that he was going to fo- follow David Stearns to New York and was going to take over as the Mets manager. Right. That was the other. Those were the two options. Um. Crazy. I think it was the uh, yeah the Guardians got permission to interview him before while right. he was, while while he was still under contract. Right. The contract expired November. I think it was like the end of October was yep. when, or shortly after the World Series ended, was when his contract ended. Yeah, was up. Now the Cubs made a amazing offer when it comes to to. Uh, to managers um they did it was five years 40 million dollars which equals out to about eight million dollars a year yep making him the highest paid manager in baseball yeah the brewers by comparison it was known that they offered 5.5 million a year by the way great salary that still makes him a pretty well-paid uh manager yep but the cubs went all in the Cubs also the the hard part for me I'm pretty sure Monday at an at an interview or at a press conference uh um uh uh I mean even leading up to all of this nobody was saying that David well, Ross was on the hot seat. They said that David was their future. We're moving forward with David Ross. That happened last week in in press conferences. So then all of a sudden we're gonna put him, we're gonna throw him out. I, I don't know where that came from. Well, I don't know if anybody expected Craig Council to be available because the Cubs didn't talk with him until he was officially his contract was up. Yeah. And the fact that he went there, that's crazy. That's awesome. I'm happy about the move. But, man, did anybody see that coming? No. Um, David Ross ends his career as a manager. Well, it was the Cubs. I don't know. I don't think it's the end, but it. I think it'd be tough. But he with ends the it Cubs. with the Cubs at uh, 262 and 284. Just barely under 500 for for manager. With the teams that he was given, did a pretty decent job. Yeah, in during that same time span that Ross was the skipper of the Cubs, Council had a record of 302 and 244. Yeah, that's pretty damning there uh, to see. But look at the the talent difference mm-hmm. that the two guys had now. Things, I really like this move. I love this move. This move is, I think, a great move for the Cubs. Um, I I don't like how it went down for David Ross. I think David deserved a little bit more. Um, but it also feels a lot like the way things happened with Joe Madden. It does. It, it, it really does. I mean, the Cubs, I, mean, I think people had more of a connection with David Ross than they did with Rick Renteria. Yep. Um, but 
I think a lot of people are seeing that Council is probably a better long-term manager for this team. Yeah. Because I, I, we've talked about on this show that we didn't think that David Ross was going to be the one that take him across the finish line I, and but, get them back into being a perennial playoff contender or let, let alone a World Series champion. By the way, and and I didn't – I as a thought experiment, you run the season back, same exact players – Craig Council is the manager. I 100% believe that the Cubs end up in the playoffs knocking the Diamondbacks out. Now, I'm not saying that the Cubs would have played exactly like the Diamondbacks did through the playoffs, but in theory, the Cubs would have kept the, the Diamondbacks out of the playoffs. Theoretically, if the Cubs were playing like that, could the Cubs have made it to the World Series again? Probably. I think they had the talent that they could have made it there. I think the the results still are the same. I think the I think the Rangers had better talent, better veterans, better leadership. And I I think as much as Craig Council is better leadership, I don't think they overcome the skill diff between the Rangers and the Cubs at that time. But Is it outrageous to say that with Craig Council as a manager, the Cubs could have made at least a playoff run? Not blowing the, not blowing that lead in September, I think would have been would have gotten them into the playoffs. Right. I mean, I still don't like that the David Ross seemed to have had played the old adage of "I'm going to play the guys that got me here." There, there was a lot of that. those got even though those some of those guys were struggling or they yeah. were just out of gas. Well, constantly and constantly throwing. Yep. Lighter, Merriweather, Alzali out there because those are the only guys in the bullpen you trusted. Yep. Regardless of how many days in a row they pitched. Yep. And I not be not playing a hot hand in like Alexander Chireno. After he gives you like a four RBI game and then he sits on the bench for two, three weeks. Yeah. And doesn't play again until the last game of the regular season. Yeah. Yeah. I I think if Craig Council is there, I don't think the Cubs blow that lead. I think the Cubs hold on. At least they hold on to and make the playoffs. Yeah. They would hold on and make the playoffs. I think. I don't know how far they go in the playoffs. But. But who I, thought. Who thought. But. At the beginning Nobody of the season, the who thought Arizona was going to do that? Heck, no. a month a month out, who thought Arizona was going to do that? Probably when the playoffs started, you didn't think Arizona was going to go that Yeah. I, so, but I don't know if, the, if Craig Council would have gotten the Cubs to all the way to the World Series. No, I don't think – honestly, he does. I don't think he does. But I think he at least gets us into the playoffs this year. Now, All right, so. it does it change at the end of the year how good it how good the year was? No, I think the year ended great. I think David Ross. I think there were some mistakes that he made, but I think Craig Council probably doesn't make the same mistakes. By the way, he has made those mistakes, but that was ten years ago when he first started when he first started managing. I think so. Yeah, that's when he was making those mistakes. He's so if council, yeah. You know, so, so if you would you have been upset if the Cubs hadn't signed council? No. Would you have been because nobody? You don't even know that they were. You didn't even know that they were talking to him. One, that was the biggest thing. We wouldn't have known that they were talking. Two, even if they did, even if they did make it known that we had made this offer, um. So here's the problem. I think. If it would have become public that they had, they were making offers to council, David Ross's time has to be done, right? Well, there's a lot of PR work that would need to be done to yeah to come out and say, you know, you know, hey, we yeah, we made an offer to this guy, New York, the Mets or the Brewers matched the offer. That's why he's not managing us this year. Yeah, but if as soon as you say that, David Ross knows that you want you you think you don't think he's good enough for you. Right. So, yeah, I mean, so if it if it had become public and they failed to make the the deal, that would have been the the that would have been a bigger deal. 
I don't like that Ross didn't get a ser- like didn't even get a ceremonial. Hey, it's, it's been great. <clears throat> the the only thing that I've seen, they said, hey, uh, we had to make the tough decision. We had to let David Ross go in a memo, in a yeah, press it release. Was a, it was a memo. I mean, they did go to him. They did take the time to fly down to Ross's house in Tallahassee to deliver the news in person that they were going to relieve him of his duties. It wasn't a phone call. It wasn't a text message. It wasn't him finding out through the press that they had hired him. That Which they had hired that they were going to hire counsel. About the only good thing that the Cubs did. But seriously, um, okay, before we get into the Cubs side of this, let's go to the David Ross side of this. Okay. Does David Ross manage again? I think that he does, but I think it, he's going to actually take some time away from the game this time. I was kind of surprised when he came out of retirement or came out of his token yeah. front yeah. office job to take over for Joe Madden because the whole reason why he retired was because he wanted to be home with his family. Yeah. So I don't think he's going to jump right back into managing. I think there's been talks that the Padres might interview him. I think but that, I don't. I think actually I the Padres are his best, are a good landing spot for him. I think they really are, and I think that's where he ends up. I don't know. I could see him going to somewhere close to his home in Tallahassee, or to another organization that he has a connection with. Okay. And it maybe taking, uh, maybe uh, going to uh, Atlanta or maybe Boston next. Okay. Um. I pray he doesn't end up in Houston. He's probably not going to wind up in Houston. I don't. I haven't even heard who is going to who's going to get the job in Houston yet. That's how. Nobody that's wants how, it. Okay, Mike. I, okay. I don't want it. I don't think anybody out there really true. Like it, it's a terrible. I don't know. I just I don't see a good reason for them to do it, but it's fine. Um, of the three jobs left, which one do you want most? I'd probably take Milwaukee because yep. I know the ownership group is going to be patient with me. Yep, yep. I like it. Okay, Same. so let's go back. Cub side. Yeah. Good move, bad move. Let's see move. I like the move. I want to see what else is going to lead to the coaching change. How many of the current coaches are going to come back and how many, and how many are, is council going to be able to bring back with him, going to bring on board. So it's more of his staff and not the front office's staff. No, I like that. I think that's uh, that's a very good point. Um, Okay. Um, What, What could this type of, move mean for the Cubs in general? Well, we're paying our... Are they going to stay on the track of waiting for prospects to come up, or are they going to be major players in free agency? Well, they've already become a a major player in free agency. The amount that Shohei Otani's name and Chicago in the same sentence has been this week alone tells you that they are making major pushes there and are truly, truly trying to be big big money spenders. Uh, they open the purses to hire Craig Council, making him the highest paid manager in history. And now we're going to see him, we're going to see uh, them open up the pocketbooks. And I truly think they're going hard and they're going to be willing to spend and make Shohei Otani a significant offer. What? I hope that they pass on Rotan. Wow. You you think you think that he, they shouldn't? No, I don't. Okay. Why? Well, Mike, has he ever played a full major league baseball season without getting hurt at some point? No. No, 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 he hasn't. But how many seasons has he played? He's up to like four or five, I think. I thought it was three, maybe two. I don't remember. 
Anyway, I, I just don't, I do not like Otani's injury history. Okay. I'm not saying that you, if you sign the contract, you've got to make him commit to being a pitcher or a hitter. But I think there's just too much injury risk involved with with him to go ahead and hand him a $500, $500 million plus contract to be the whole pitcher, pitcher, catcher, pitcher, hitter combo that he wants to be, and decidedly so, because he is such a good hitter as well as a pitcher. But besides having to pay top dollar for your DH that's not going to be able to play every single day like a normal DH would, because you got to give them the off the rest days to prepare, give them the, the day the day before his start to prepare for being a starter the next day and the day off the day after he pitches because he needs the recovery day from pitching and the injury history, not to mention you're, wow. you would have to modify your starting, your starting rotation to be a six man rotation because he, because he's going to, because he'll be in your rotation. I think it's going to be too much money, too okay. much money. I, I wouldn't be upset if they signed him, but I am hoping that they don't. Okay. By the way, you were correct. This is his fifth year. Which makes sense because he's on a contract year. It was his contract year, so that makes a hundred percent sense. I just it was not thinking that. Um, I I would let somebody else I, give him that five hundred million dollar plus year that's going to drag down your payroll and make it hard for you to fill out the rest of your roster. Yeah, unless you are the Yankees or the Mets. Or but why the can't Dodgers. the Cubs do it? The Cubs have the money. I'd rather them sign multiple players for that type of money. But, okay, money. here's the problem with your thinking, though. You're saying unless you're the, the Yankees or the Dodgers or you're saying the Mets, who basically just have bottomless pits of money. Aren't the Cubs close to that? You'd think they would be. You'd think they would be. But and if they are bottomless pits of money, if that's what, why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't you go go after him? I get that he, he has some injury expectations. And I get, yeah, if you don't restrict him to just a pit, position player or just a pitcher. But one, if you get him, so I think he's gonna. you're going to see that it's going to be a little bit less than top dollar because the the question of coming off of Tommy Johns as soon as you come so, off so yeah so if you sign him with this 500 million dollar deal you're not going to get your he's getting that he they're projecting that high of a contract because he can pitch and he can hit right but in year one of that contract can't hit so he won't be able to pitch I think I think he gets a great contract I don't think it's that crazy um and I think that once I, I think it's I think I think it's somebody we should go after. I think we should. Uh, we're never we're not going to agree on this one, but that's fine. Uh, we still no, don't know where. I'm, he's I'm sorry. Be. You can kick the tires on him. Bring him in for a visit. Kick the tires. See, see what type of money it would take to sign him. But I just hope that they don't sign him. So who do you want him? Who do you want the Cubs to sign? Golly. right now it just comes down to guys. I don't want to see him go after Mike. Oh, okay. People are talking about Pete Alonso and Juan Soto. Who's their agent, Mike? Yep. Scott Boris. Yep. So if you give up prospects to get one or both of those guys. It's a rental. Are you going to be, if they would be a rental because they there's a chance that they could be a rental because. No, they, it's, not, it's not a chance. Boris, it's not a chance. They will be a rental. Boris will not let them go, exactly. not go to arbitration. They're and as soon as they. Going to, he won't negotiate in good faith with you unless they're a free agent. By the way, I think I think teams need to stop negotiating with Scott Boris. Don't give his players the same offers. If if I were if I were a uh, uh, head office guy, if I was a GM, I'm calling. I'm saying I'm give Scott. I'm gonna give your guy three thousand dollars less. Than what or three million dollars less a year? Yeah, he's gonna be a 
thirty million dollar player, but he's not going to be a thirty three million dollar player. Why? Because you. And I I tell him that straight to his face. Because the fact of the matter is, is that he hurts their chances. A he doesn't like doing. He'll do the the long term deals. But it's for the most amount of money. Right. Why on earth would Chris Bryant go to Colorado? Yeah, doesn't make sense. Other than Scott Boris told him to. I wouldn't do it. I would intentionally not deal with Scott Boris as much as I could. Yeah, that's why I hope they don't go after Soto. I like Soto as a hitter. Yeah. But he also doesn't. We also don't need another outfielder or DH with the amount of yeah. young talent that we have coming up. Yep, I can go with that. And Pete Alonso, I don't mind Pete Alonso, but I, I don't know. Right now, I think I'd rather, if you're if you're pressing the question, well, who do I want to see him sign? I think I'd bring back Jamer Candelario. And if we can't convince Cody Bellinger to come back, because we're going to ask him to probably predominantly play first base, yep. go get Reese Hoskins from the Phillies. Yeah, Reese Hoskins is like a free it. agent. And he's already been told he's probably not going to be back in Philly because they're going to keep Bryce Harper at first base. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Long night. And that'll, yeah. And then some, <coughs> and obviously you can never have enough pitching, but I don't know who those guys are. Yeah. Right but say, to start throwing names out. Pitchers I don't have a lot of stuff for. So, um, okay. Real quick. Let's get off of this and let's start giving some spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. We are going to talk about The Masked Singer. If you don't want to hear about it, thanks for joining us this week. We appreciate it. We are uh, here every week. Either We generally are live on Facebook at facebook.com slash balls and sticks. Friday or Saturday, check us out. You'll get a notification if you like and follow us. Uh, Rich, they they are listening, watching us on one of those. Uh, on on one of those two pages on Facebook, but they want to watch. They want to listen to us in their car. How should they go about doing that? You know, look at balls and six wherever you find all your um any other podcasts. Yep. As um we're on uh, probably gonna mess this up, but um iHeart, um iHeart, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, just the name of you. Perfect. Uh, YouTube, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, YouTube music. YouTube podcast yeah please. youtube yeah. music podcast mike and if they're uh listening to us in podcast land but don't like facebook where else can they find the video feed of the show just fa- just youtube youtube balls and six yeah you can find us we're on there um okay rich let's get into this spoiler alert which is for the mass singer as we always do we uh didn't have one last week because the the world series this week we did have a mat we did have a uh, one hit wonder night which i disagree with one of their songs they played as a quote unquote one hit wonder okay what song was that two princes two princes okay i had never heard of that song but the okay. spin doctors no never heard of it oh bro the spin doctors are great um i think i want to say they might have only had one song that hit the top of the charts and that's probably what but classified it as a they, one hit wonder. Little Miss Can't Be Wrong made it on the charts Jimmy mm-hmm. Olsen Blues made it on the charts didn't make it all the way up there uh, man they've done so much stuff that so, 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 all right. so Mike who is your favorite costume of the night I think the anteater was the best vocally. I, I would agree. I liked the anteater as well. I was which I honestly I was kind of surprised when he went when they when he went to the SmackDown. The one that I thought was gonna go to the SmackDown that didn't the donut. By the way, bringing it back around, I told you we would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Back to the donut. Uh, I think they are on to who it is already. Which also made it surprising that they didn't get it, kick him off. Um, because I think it, I think they they were a hundred percent correct in thinking that's Tom Jones. 
I thought it as soon as I heard his voice. I'm like, that sounds like Tom Jones. So I think that's who it is. Um, and I think that's accurate. I think that's who's who. I think Tom Jones is the donut. Uh, but um, I think he had the worst night of the night. I don't think he had the worst night of the night. I, I the right person went home. In my opinion, as I thought, the Hibiscus was the worst performer of the night, both in the SmackDown and in their regular performance. If if she would have done the SmackDown the same against uh, the Donut, I think she still goes home. And I, I honestly, yeah. I think her SmackDown performance was way worse than her regular performance, and that's why I think she deserved to go home. But in all honesty, I thought her her performance was good. The f- the first one, I think it was better than the. I thought it was going to be Hibiscus, and uh, and uh, and Donut, and I thought Donut was going to go home right away. Uh, hearing her rendition of "Hey Mickey," I was convinced she was going home oh. right away at that point. That was so terrible. That was bad. That was bad. That was the way that terrible. Hey Mickey, her her do "Hey Mickey." I um, really didn't like either rendition of Hey Mickey, but yeah, at least yeah, I agree. the uh, the Ant Eater did better though. Yeah. Um So give the people who it was. Oh man, I don't even remember because I watched them live. The Countess from Real Housewives of Long Island, I think. Luann Lindor or something like that. I'm going off memory here. I know it's the count she's the countess. I don't a countess. Yeah. I don't uh, know. I've never Lauren Lauren De Lupus. Lauren yeah, De Lupus. De Lupus. I guess De Lupus. And I guess she does a She's one of the real housewives of one of those New York or Yeah, I think Jersey it's New York or... and I think and she mentioned that come see me at my uh Burlesque my show. review show. Yeah. My my re- musical review show. And so I was like No, thank songs. you. Yeah, and the thing is that people were right on to her as well. So the theory yeah. of if the if the panel is is on to the is uh, is on the scent of the trail and knows who it is, that person usually goes home that night. I was a little bummed it it wasn't who Kim Jong said it was because he'd been doing so well this season. Yeah, he has. But anyway, with that, Rich, what's it time to do? Well, Mike, we got to give some shout outs real quick. Oh, do we? Um, your um, uh, we gotta wish a happy belated birthday to Joe Perry as oh, yeah. Marine Corps birthday. Yeah, on Friday. Yeah, 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 yes, and oh man, Rich, thanks for pointing it. Man, I'm sorry. It's been a. It's all right. It's been a hell of a week. And a uh, and Veterans Day to Joe as well. Yeah, so. Joe, we thank you. Or Rich, honestly, um, your service. I I do it every year, and I I can't say thank you enough. Um, and I mean it, and I hope you understand that I mean it. That I there I can't say thank you enough for your sacrifice and your willingness to to be willing to lay your di- life down for for the country and and for your friends uh by going overseas and and participating as a veteran of this country as as being a soldier in this country um the sacrifice you Joe so many friends of ours have made uh on explainable you followed the call of christ to lay your life down for your friends and even your enemies if you don't know this rich has gone overseas and would have laid his life down if it was called of him even for people in this country that he does not like there's only two two people in 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 history that do this soldiers Volunteer soldiers, by the way, this country has volunteer soldiers, not like other countries, that force soldiers to ship upon you. Occasionally, we do have the draft, but currently, in a non-draft era, soldiers are volunteers. They volunteer to give up their lives for you. The only other person in history that's done that, Jesus Christ himself. Following this, the leadership, rich volunteered and was willing to do that and rich i can't say thank you enough 
your bravery and your what at times you would jokingly say just ordinary acts just doing the job even in some of the some of the things that you've you had to face over there i i don't want to share your stories for you but you've shared them with me and just doing your job you deserve more thanks than any of us can give you and i appreciate it sir um and it's an honor to call you friend and i say that about joe perry and i say that about uh any number of people here i if i started the list i i would go on for hours your sacrifice is not unnoticed and we appreciate it yeah and mike uh tell the folks why we are for sure doing a uh a saturday so I next mean, afternoon show like yeah so next saturday or next thursday we leave for marshalltown with the esports team we will then be at state uh, I will post on our Facebook page <coughs> our uh, Twitch feed uh, so you can watch the Twitch ch- the Twitch feed of Esther of the es- or of the the Okaboji team itself. Uh, I'll also post the official state feed so you can follow the state with commentary. All right, so watch for those uh, videos to be posted on our on our Facebook page, Mike. Yep. And with that, Mike, so thank you, or thank you uh, again for those kind words um, uh, to myself and all the veterans out there. Um, yeah, thanks for your service this week to everybody else, uh, all the other veteran listening out there this week. But Mike, with all that said, now, what's time to do? Timber roll the outro, sir. Broadcasting live from somewhere in Iowa, this is Balls and Sticks, the podcast, with your hosts, Mike and Rich.